Our next speaker is a former high school administrator and teacher, and currently a homebound tutor for the Ann Arbor Public Schools. Please welcome Elizabeth Gray. These four words have haunted me since I heard them from a black senior at a local high school, recuperating at home from a dire surgery that killed his chance of college ball. As his homebound tutor, I asked him, what don't you like about white people? That's what he said. How can a star be invisible? He's a ball player on Division I radar. Stadiums filled with his fans. They share the same staff, the same classrooms. They can't see you because they don't see you. The cafeterias are segregated. The hallways are segregated. Much of the curriculum is segregated. Here are direct quotes from students I know. Read the words in red. There's a wedge. I, sorry, the words in red are people. There's a wedge between us. I'm afraid. I don't talk to white kids. I'm the only AP uh, enrollee who's black. Here's my sons. If you don't play ball, you can avoid black people. There's an indictment here, but there's an opportunity. The conversation among the races, I've asked this question every semester for 30 years, and the answer has always been the same. It goes deeper. When I introduced Steinbeck's comments in the classroom, black students looked at me and raised their eyebrows. Everybody else looked at their desk, but no one disagreed. What is the sum of fear and suspicion? It is distance. There is the heart of the gap, and it affects achievement profoundly. Why should black students have an authentic investment in a classroom where they feel invisible. Suspicion is one of the morbid reactions we see in black students in Arbor as they seek the other equilibrium, which is each other. What can be done about it? This, this dilemma, which is so deep and so persistent in our city, the mecca of education, there's an achievement gap. But we do have a chance to be leaders. Our schools are integrated, and we are rich in resources. Our high school literature and history courses focus on the past. The curriculum mirrors mine, which happened decades ago. Ms. Jacobs tells us that we think, she thinks, timely curriculum has fallen away. You know what? Students don't care a lot about the past. This is what they think about every day. This is the common ground between students. The only way to bridge the stereotypes, the ones students believe about each other and the ones they may believe about themselves, is through conversation. The Socratic model, calling and responding, calling and responding. Ann Arbor does have a chance to be the leader and best. I'm proposing a bellwether course of action that I believe would strengthen our high school curriculum, narrow the gap, and produce graduates who are culturally aware. After 30 years in this trade, I believe we have to establish a common ground curriculum where there are no right answers. If not, Black students will continue to feel invisible, and the gap will not narrow. There is no course in Ann Arbor's large high schools where students have a voice in the books, the classes, or the formats. It's time to hear from them. My proposal is about a common ground curriculum, where it's one semester a year, it's every year, it's, it's required for graduation, Students participate in designing and delivering it. There is no tracking. It is only when the conversation begins that any of us can expect there to be a change in the way students perceive each other. What is the price of ignoring this? It's invisibility. What's the price of invisibility? 
a tentative commitment. What does that mean? The gap persists. This can be done. Our students need it. Our worlds need it. Let's step, step into the national spotlight. In four years, I want to ask another black student my question and have that person say, you know, there's this one class I took where I got to know the people around me, and I am visible. Thank you, Elizabeth.